Welcome everybody to the first of our industry chat series. During this informal session, we aim to address all the current issues and challenges faced by the hospitality industry in Singapore and around the world. So let's get started. It's been a crazy 2020. Hotels have experienced unprecedented financial pressures with occupancies and rates falling way below break-even point. While we all try very hard to recover, the impact of the economic crisis appears to be somewhat unclear. Questions are still being asked about recovery times, customer needs, operational realities, financial challenges, and what do industry players need to do to prepare for the coming years? Ultimate question in everyone's mind, what really lies ahead? Today we have with us two very accomplished hotel leaders. Mr. Clarence Tan, previously with ISG and Millennia Copthorne, now with the Hilton International. He's very experienced in the field of hotel developments and strategy, and we look forward to some great insights from him. Along with him is Mr. Tan Kim Singh, Chief Operating Officer of the Meritus Hotels and Resorts Group, who has decades of experience in the hotel operations, and it will indeed be very interesting to hear his thoughts on what changes we can expect from customer needs and its implications to hotel operations in the coming years. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on the show. My pleasure to be here. I thought we could start by talking about some of the figures that we've seen. First, average occupancy in 2020 has come down, 55% uh, in 2020. Uh, and of course, considering that 2019 was an exceptionally good year uh, for tourism in general, and of course, hotels enjoyed that benefit. Uh, but still, it was 98% in 2019 and then it became 55% in 2020. Average occupancies were $140 to $150 per night, uh, and these figures I'm getting out of uh, STBs and Forbes. Um, and we're looking at about a $70 decrease since 2019. What do you think has been the major impact of this devastating performance in 2020? How hotels cope with this? This is the first area I would like to cover. Clarence, would you like to I think step you've in? Yeah. Covered a whole host of issues in regards to the pandemic in 2020. Um, having lived most of my life as a hoteler, I must say, it is actually a very tough year for everyone out there. Not just hotel owners, but also for the employees and our guests and every industry that supports hotels and tourism for Singapore right. in Singapore. Right. Um, there, there are many lessons to take from a pandemic like this. I'll start with some of the more grateful things I've seen first. I am grateful with what the government has done in terms of the job support scheme, the relocation of employees, the training that's gone out, uh, rebates, to help shoulder some of the more expensive costs in hotels, which is predominantly labour. And with that, they were able to help make ends meet, so to speak, for most hotel companies in Singapore. The second thing that they have done is to allow us as hotelers to keep our hotels operational. And with that, they have the stay-home notice advantage, government quarantine facilities, and of course, hotels that trade as per normal. Right? And you can see that with some of their interventions, especially some of Kim Seng's hotels in Crown Plaza, Changi, uh, they have actually done very, very well in that respect. Albeit a difficult year, uh, most Singapore owners are thankful for the support that the government has given them. Having said that, I think you cannot ignore the fact that the pandemic seems to last longer than is welcome. Right? And now into 2021, with some of the measures pulling back, I do see a more pain ahead for the hotel industry in Singapore. You say SHNs have helped out quite a bit with, uh, with hotels, trying to make up for what they've lost. Of course, it doesn't make up for what they've lost. Mm -hmm. Did it help in terms of survival? 
I think um, <coughs> I would put it this way. I think we we are still in flux. We've been in flux since um, the start of um, the pandemic, or then it wasn't even termed as pandemic. I remember January or December 2019, and uh, I was in China in November 2019, and of course no inkling what was going to happen a month later. And starting December and then January and February, and of course we were still grappling with what is happening, what is going to happen, and what will happen. And even as we speak today, I don't think we'll, we, nobody knows for sure when it's all going to go away. Uh, what's going to happen next? Every day we have something new happening. I think all of 2020, or at least most part of it, um, it's very situational. Uh, really depends on where you are and when you were there. Uh, I think Clarence mentioned, for example, our Crown Plaza at Changi Airport at Terminal 3 that we own, our company owns. Um, they are in a slightly different um, boat. They were at the, they are the right place at the right time, uh, where they now you know because it is dictated um, that all air crews arriving in Singapore right now during this pandemic must stay in that hotel at predetermined rates, non non negotiable. So they were um, in the right place, the right time, and benefiting from it. Well, of course, there are other uh, hotels in, um, in other situations and then you become a victim of the circumstance that you're in. Um, so, it's not a real and not a natural market that we're in anyhow. So, I think figures like occupancies and average rates for 2020 and 2021 are really not good ways to measure how we fit. If we're all still around, we still have our jobs, we're still running and we're still keeping the staff employed. Uh, in Singapore, I think we've been, as, as Clarence right, rightly uh, pointed out, we've been fortunate to have been supported by the government. So we do not see hotels shutting down because they were uh, running in the red and as a result were forced to, as we've seen elsewhere across the border in Malaysia, Indonesia. Hotels are shutting down because otherwise they, it was better off for them to shut down than to continue to operate. But Singapore, that's not the question. You know, those that shut, shut for various reasons, different reasons.